driving to this remote area back here. All right, guys, so we're here at Camp Dearborn in uh, Milford, Michigan, and we are filming an awesome segment right now. Um, I'm filming with a Michigan DNR, and uh, you can see I got my truck here, DNR trucks here, all these guys down there. Um, we're actually filming the life cycle and the stocking cycle of walleye. Uh, so they're going to show me today how they catch all the walleye, how they get them all in the net, how they put them into the tanks over here in these trucks. Uh, there's a couple different ones, and they're all down there. Gotta wait till you done talking, man. And then, uh, and then we're gonna take them to a lake and stock them. So stay tuned, guys. I'm gonna show you guys some really cool behind the scenes stuff. This is the vlog. You're watching the vlog. So what makes the fish even come this way? Oh, just grab that's it? Yep. Okay. That's it. I thought everything was gonna be like pulling out, like draining through here, like like hard, like a bathtub kind of thing where everything's getting sucked out. Um, if the river was lower, it would flow better. Oh, okay. But it's gotta go against the pressure of the river coming this way too. <laughs> oh, so this is pushing against it too. Yeah, so the pond's higher than this, and then uh, you know, this is the low spot. But this is usually, you know, six inches lower. Well, now I get why it was canceled for the last five weeks because the yeah, river level was. The water was over the east. Yeah, I, I didn't understand the way it was set up, and now I see it. I totally get it. If this water level is too high, then you can't you can't drain that into this. Drain. Yeah. And then if it does drain, the fish do still still get out. You know, we don't want them getting over this. So there's no way we can catch them. Will that and wouldn't it overflow the river too then, or was it not change the river height that much? No, I won't. No. Oh, okay. Wally dog. So it's like finding a golden ticket and getting a walleye. Right now. Um, the last half hour, last hour would be real busy. But cool. these fish are bigger, so that's a good size walleye. They're uh, they're half again as big as they usually are, so they can fight the current a lot, a lot better. That's <laughs> bass bait right there. Don't, pull, don't make a hole. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, that's oh, wet. Oh, shit. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Because there's fish coming. Look at that. I think we still have another hour. Oh, nice. There you go. Mike, let me get a shot. Oh, here they come. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Dude, I'm a fish. One is on. Oh, boy. Come on. Yeah, usually I yell fish on, but it's for a different reason. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Perfect. Cool. All right. So we got some good walleye over here, too. Look at all these guys. All right, so when the buckets get full over here or get enough in them, um, then they come over here and put them in this trap inside the lake or inside the river right here. So you can see all these walleye right there all hanging out. That way they get a fresh supply of oxygen, some nice water. So how do you know when there's a fish in there? You see it moving, or you just gotta yeah, constantly scoop? When it gets busy, they just you just scoop. But um, just right now, they they're supposed to come up because this is on an angle. They're supposed to get, but it's not flowing as fast as it should because the river's so high. That okay. tube should be about this far out of the water. Oh, that'd make more. Yeah, then it would just it would have so, the air the air going right. back in it. But we don't have that. Anybody that gets one, can you hold it up to my camera and tilt mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's what's up. Of course he yeah. has one. Tell me what this is really quick. <laughs> it's a walleye. Small fingerling walleye. It's less than a year old. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. All right, so they're going through here right now, scooping for some walleye and seeing what they can get out of there. There's been some uh, some walleye action recently in here. You can see these buckets. I'm getting some fish in them. Hey-o. Oh, there's another one. Thank you. 
kind of like harvesting for gold here. You're just using screens and seeing what comes out and sometimes it's trash, sometimes it's gold, right? So super cool process though. So they drain the water out of the pond until it's dry, let it filter through here, get all the fish out of it, and then they leave it empty until the spring and then they refill it and then do the whole process all over again. It's in incredible to see it all work and how advanced this all is too. Uh, so we're gonna keep on filming for a little bit and then we'll show you guys some more soon. See here. All right, here's a uh, camera guy, Brett, over here filming. <laughs> no way. See, you can see yourself on the camera? Yeah. Or on the screen over here. Dude, that's gangster. So you can see it all really easily. So what do you think of the filming, man? Do you think it's this is cool? I think this is great, man. I I have, don't know as much about fishing, and I absolutely like learned so much today right now with all these fish coming out. I didn't know they put it out there so people could fish and people that love fishing and catch it, and uh, everybody can have a great meal. Yeah. <laughs> so what camera rig are you using today? Now, right now it's a ADD. We're using a Canon ADD with a 16 by 35 lens, EF lens, and uh, shoulder rig here. We got our wireless mics on here for good old you and the talent. Uh, good times, man. Uh, yeah, this pretty is a simple rig to what we normally have, but what's cool about filming is that we can always adapt. We can use smaller rigs when we have to, use bigger rigs when we have to. Look at that walleye. Look at the size of that boy. Let me see. Oh, you got it? Okay. Does anyone bring a fillet knife with them? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Back up, Mikey. See here. All right, here's a uh, camera guy, Brett, over here filming. <laughs> no way. See, you can see yourself on the camera. Yeah. Or on the screen over here. Dude, that's gangster. So you can see it all really easily. So what do you think of the filming, man? Do you think it's this is cool? I think this is great, man. I I have, don't know as much about fishing and I absolutely like learned so much today right now with all these fish coming out. I didn't know they put it out there so people could fish and people that love fishing and catch it and uh, everybody can have a great meal. Yeah. <laughs> so what camera rig are you using today? Now right now it's a ADD. We're using a Canon ADD with a 16 by 35 lens, EF lens, and uh, shoulder rig here. We got our wireless mics on here for good old you and the talent. Uh, good times, man. Uh, yeah, this pretty is a simple rig to what we normally have, but what's cool about filming is that we can always adapt. We can use smaller rigs when we have to, use bigger rigs when we have to. Look at that walleye. Look at the size of that boy. Let me see. Oh, you got it? Okay. Does anyone bring a fillet knife with them? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Back up, Mikey. This is like having too many fishermen in the same spot right here. Someone saw someone saw a walleye jump and now they have to fight over to see who can net it first. I thought I saw something. Hey, winner, winner, chicken dinner. There it is. They live, so just because it's uh, really silty and stuff, that's not a bad thing. Those are things that fish. I don't know, mayflies came from the water. Yeah. Yeah, they come out of the mud. No way. Yeah. That's the worst thing in the world because they taste terrible when you're on the boat. <laughs> and we're on St. Clair and you just eat a bunch of them because you can't fish, help it. <laughs> fish love these things though. Yeah, dude, the mayfly hatch on St. Clair is, it's disgusting, but it's fun for fishing. <laughs> yeah. Water, so like, the, uh, I think it's nine days, the amount of, the volume of uh, Lake St. Clair is flushed out through, down into the Detroit River. In nine days? In nine days from the, like, uh, you know, because there's so much flow coming from Lake Huron through the St. So Clair. So water is that, the, all the water that's in St. Clair right that now, volume. in nine days, it'll be all new water. That's roughly, amazing. Roughly. Yeah, that's still incredible. And stuff, but yeah, the amount of volume goes through there in nine days. That's incredible. Yeah. Heat average? Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, 10 to 12. So that's, that's often the size that we'll get. These really small guys, when we don't have minnows to put on them, they're usually a little smaller. But we've been fortunate and there's there's not as obviously not as many fish this year so they get a little larger when they, we have that scenario yeah you never know what you're gonna hey, find in these nets we're gonna we'll go do that and come back hey, and buddy. See if nobody takes any of these perfect yeah. Ready? Uh -huh. it's so crazy how like much they vary in size yeah, yeah. some just learn how to eat and some don't <laughs> all right this was a super awesome thing to learn i i never knew how this all worked i never really knew how they stocked the fish or how they collected the fish 
and uh, now I do. And this was incredible. It was so cool. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of boring, to be honest with you. I'm like, yeah, I sit here and watch fish be pulled out. But uh, I got to get wet and get in the water and see all these walleye. And they usually have thousands of walleye. Uh, but this year they only had hundreds um, and it's happens every year like you never know what you're gonna get in the crop until you harvest it so uh, you never know some years it's it's slow some years they die off some years they don't uh, you know last year they said they had thousands this year they had hundreds but it was a super cool thing and if you want to learn more about this google it look it up check out the resources um, from the Michigan DNR and they have a lot of resources too where you can learn about all this stuff and how they stock fish in your area uh, but this process right here it's super cool. Bunch of great guys having a great time and uh, being around fish all day. It's not really a bad thing. So we're going to head over to uh, the pond that we just drained and get some shots of that. And then we're going to head over to Pontiac Lake, which is in my area. That's where I like to fish a lot too. Head over to Pontiac Lake where we're going to drop these fish off that we got today. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So a huge thank you to the Michigan DNR and everybody here that helped out and made this happen. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog so far, but stay tuned. we got some more content coming and I uh, can't wait to share the full episode with you guys. So make sure you stay tuned for the entire full episode of this on the Pursuit Channel in 2022. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, so right here where we're standing right here, this was water. Like this was part of the lake right here that was drained. It's even a golf ball right here, which is very common that we always see in the lakes. Uh, but check this out. You can see how cracked it is from all the hydration being removed. But we're technically standing in the bottom of a lake right now. Just no water. I'm assuming these were all fish beds at one point. No, probably not. Um, it's probably just uh, birds kind of mucking around. Oh, really? Okay. Ducks. You know, there's a lot of ducks and everything else. Put that GoPro away now. All right, so right there, if you can see the whirlpool right there, that's where all this water that was here all drains down right there. And I did ask, by the way, it's not like Bugs Bunny where it goes to the other side of the world. I asked, they won't let me try it, but that's where all the fish go out and go through the whole tunnel system all the way through here, all the way up over there to where we were getting the fish out. So all the fish go down there, little toilet, toilet bowl ride, all the way down to the net down there. Super cool process. And there's a lot of golf balls here because this is also a water hazard for a golf course right there. So this is what the bottom of the lake looks like. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Hey. This is so cool. This is where the fish come out right here. You go right out of here. Into this lake. All right, that's awesome. So we have to see the fish. I got on the lever. I got down in there. That's sweet. I got him backing up, getting all that, and I trapped him around real smooth and nice. I feel good. That'll be good. All right, so all the walleye just came out of there into here, and you can see some of them hanging out right here by my feet still, getting acclimated to the water. They're not really sure where to go yet. They're all cruising around. You can see one right there. super cool guys uh, we get to share the whole process from beginning to end of how these walleye got in this lake now and so now if you're out here fishing on this lake for some walleye you might catch one of the ones that we just released so it's super cool hope you guys enjoyed the vlog uh, stay tuned for the full episode coming out next year on the pursuit channel and it'll be here on YouTube as well but thanks for watching the vlog guys and uh, stay tuned for more <laughs> All right.
Here you go, you can dump one right in the net. Dump that net right in the water. Yep, about a little farther. There you go. That's so cool. Is that cool? Now you stock the lake. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's cold. It's cold. I'll look at him off. I'll pull this one here. Well, thank you. Sure. If I make, make sure to pull his mic, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll grab it up here. 